so if you go back to the Obama administration, one of the very notable aspects of the Obama administration was how few people leaked. Very few people in the Obama administration would uh, spill the beans on things that were going on behind the scenes that uh, could reflect poorly on the administration. They were a very loyal bunch. Contrast that with the Trump administration, and everybody leaked. It It was very fractured, the Trump administration was. There is now a story in the left wing Axios about how Biden quote-unquote, botched the border. This comes as Democrats have said they intend to campaign on uh, the allegations that Donald Trump botched the border. Aboard Air Force One en route to tour the southern border in January 2023, President Biden sat at the head of his conference table and exploded with fury. The president lit into his team, which included then-Deputy Chief of Staff Jen O'Malley, Dylan Homeland Security Advisor Liz Sherwood Randall and other immigration officials. He demanded obscure immigration data points and vented when his staff didn't have them handy. The previously unreported meeting recounted to Axios by three people familiar with the events is emblematic of the Biden administration's struggle with the border crisis during the past three years. In fighting, blame shifting and indecision. Biden's fury subsided and aides scrambled for the information he wanted. People in the meeting later told others in frustration that his winding process and irritability were making it more difficult to reach decisions about the border. The White House countered the meeting was productive. Spokesperson Andrew Bates told Axios that, quote, multiple firsthand participants in the meeting refute this description of the tone and outcome of a conversation on the specifics of this complex issue. Um, It's notable they're throwing the boss under the bus again when it comes to immigration. Susan Rice referred to the uh, Health and Human Services Secretary, Becerra, who had been the Attorney General of California after Kamala Harris, as a, uh, well, uh, uh, used the B word and the A word and also called him an idiot. Wow. Vice President Harris's team tried to avoid any culpability, saying that her responsibilities, quote unquote, began and ended with root causes in the Northern Triangle countries in Mexico, uh, one former Biden official said that Harris was at best ineffective. This is the quote. She's been at best ineffective and at worst sporadically engaged and not seeing it was her responsibility. It's an opportunity for her and she didn't fill the breach. Then there's an attempt to throw Jake Sullivan under the the bus because National Security Advisor has rarely handled border issues. So he put uh, Sherwood Randall in charge. A sign of her inexperience came early on when she asked an official on her team for a memo explaining the differences between refugees and asylum seekers. She's well liked by her colleagues, but some believe she's in the wrong role. Uh, Alejandro Mayorkas disagreed with Joe Biden's 100-day halt on deportations, pushed the president to do more. This, by the way, is one of the things I've heard behind the scenes with Republicans is that uh, Mayorkas is actually behind the scenes way better and more honest with them that in public he uh, is a Biden loyalist and in private he's willing to criticize them. In fact, White House officials uh, limited and pushed against having Mayorkas on television until a few months ago and sought to downplay issues um, because they're just not sure whether or not uh, Mayorkas would be helpful to them. During one meeting, when Joe Biden was tearing into his homeland or his Health and Human Services Secretary about the situation of the border, Susan Rice passed Alejandro Mayorkas a note that read, Don't save him. Oof. The Biden administration has been listening to immigration advocates outside the administration, which have a, a hard line on letting people into the country. The White House generally didn't want to talk publicly about immigration or the border for much of Biden's first three years, feeling it would draw attention to a political vulnerability. 
publicly. The White House also initially downplayed jumps in illegal border crossings as normal ebbs and flows, even as internally people were saying it was significant, including the Secretary of Homeland Security. So uh, there are a couple of things going on, and it, it, my impression of the story is, one, this is part of it. Uh, the backbiting is really beginning within this administration in a way it never happened with the Obama administration. People on the Biden administration are turning on each other looking for scapegoats, and notably, one of the people who is becoming a scapegoat is Joe Biden himself. They're blaming him. Another unmistakable aspect of this is people are trying to signal that Mayorkas is the reasonable guy. Now, again, I don't expect you to believe it. I, I really don't, but I do want to explain it to you. The number of people in Congress who have said to me essentially that behind the scenes, Mayorkas is far more reasonable than he appears in public. He is far less of a team player and far more open to criticism of the Biden administration and what's happening at the border than he is in public. Uh, and that at one point he told them, if you if you get rid of me, the next guy is going to be far more progressive. It doesn't matter at this point. They're going to impeach him. They failed in the vote last week, but Steve Scalise has returned now. They're going to impeach him, deservedly so, I think, at this point. But just for perspective, some of the Republicans who have been somewhat uh, ex okay with, uh, with Mayorkas have behind the scenes, they're saying, well, it's because the next guy would be worse and he's actually far more reasonable behind the scenes than what you would realize. But the whole problem here is the gross incompetence. The wheels are falling off this policy position by the Biden administration. It's becoming a big issue. And I want you to think about and focus on something here. What is their strategy? Axios is a pretty liberal news site. They use phrases like pregnant person and unhoused. They're pretty progressive. And Axios has a deep dive story on the Biden administration. They're at each other's throats. They don't know what to do. They've been advised by progressives on the outside who have alienated them from where the American public is. They're stabbing each other in the back. They're blaming Joe Biden. They're blaming the sector of home of housing, urban development, or, or health and human services, rather. They're blaming Kamala Harris as ineffective. They're blaming the actual national security, deputy national security advisor who's in charge of it as being overwhelmed by her job. They're blaming each other. They're blaming everybody else. What were they going to do? They were going to blame Donald Trump. The Biden administration is right now in the pages of Axios online, attacking each other, stabbing each other in the back, descending into argument against each other over their handling of immigration and the border, and their strategy was going to be to blame Donald Trump, that Donald Trump scuttled a bipartisan Senate deal, so Donald Trump was to blame. Donald Trump doesn't want to solve the problem because Donald Trump wants the issue in politics, and they can't even execute on that because they're so busy blaming each other for all the problems. It's actually remarkable to see. They're blaming each other. They're attacking each other. It's it's very funny to see them do this. It's it's very funny to watch the uh, the Biden team savage each other. They can't even keep their eye on Trump. They cannot focus on blaming Donald Trump. Because the truth is coming out. They're blaming each other. They've been incompetent the whole time. They made the problem worse. They chose to ignore it for three years. They were afraid it could highlight a political liability for Joe Biden. And remarkably, knowing it was a political liability for three years, they didn't try to come up with a solution. And we now know from this reporting, they didn't come up with a solution because they were being advised by progressive activists. And in being advised by progressive activists, they wanted more people crossing the border. And in fact, the Secretary of Homeland Security advised Joe Biden not to pause deportations. And Joe Biden, on the advice of the progressive activists, chose to ignore his Homeland Security Secretary and listen to the progressives instead. Joe Biden, in fact, is to blame for the problems, including putting Kamala Harris in charge of it. And his administration can no longer keep their mouths shut. This is what we have to look forward to by the Democrats on the way to November. And Democrats outside the administration notice it, that everything, the wheels are starting to come off. 
There's no unity left. And that helps Donald Trump. This issue helps Donald Trump. And they all know it does.